2020. What does your new year need to look like for you in your life? What do you, want, what do you want God to do for you? What do you need help with? Is there something that you would like to see answered for you? Is there something that you would like to see God, you know, kind of bring to pass for you in your life? You say, I've been praying a while. I've been believing for something to change. Did you know that sometimes how you start your new year is the way that maybe it can continually go? You know, it's a good thing you came to church this morning. Why is that? Is it because God needs, you know, he needs us to, to give him thanks? No, it's because we need to honor God. It's because, listen, your week goes better when you put God first. May I say this? Your year goes better when you put God first. I believe every one of you here, and there's some that could be better, but listen, that your year is going to go better because you honored God this morning. We're talking about direction for 2020. I'm taking off where we've been the last few weeks in the scripture in Matthew chapter 2. The direction we're going to get this morning is from the angel that appeared to Joseph and his family. An angel appeared and, uh, in, in, in Matthew chapter 2 and began to share and give them direction about what they should do in their life. I'm looking at that as a springboard for direction in our life. I'll read one verse. It's just one verse this morning. There's the verse 20 and 21. 20 is what the angel told, uh, what the angel told Joseph and his family. 21 is what uh, Joseph did. So really, it's only one verse. I guess I'll read verse 20. This is what the angel said to Joseph. Now, I know Christmas is past, and I know that uh, the celebration of the birth of Christ is past. That was December 25th. But on this first Sunday of 2020, I believe God wants to give you specific direction on how you should conduct your life. I got three quick points. Then we're going to have a nice lunch afterwards. There's great food over there and get to know someone. But I got three quick thoughts on how you should govern your life. I believe if you take up these points, I really think you're going to go somewhere. I think you're going to kind of find uh, some things that you didn't think were discoverable anymore. I kind of think that God is going to do something in your life. It goes this way. Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of, of Israel. This is a scripture verse for us that, that the angel was giving Joseph direction. The first quick thought on your 2020 roadmap. What does your 2020 supposed to look like? Is there a governor? Is there some way I need to conduct my life? You see, I don't want to spin my wheels anymore. I don't want to waste any time. I'm, I'm getting older. Less opportunities, people tell me. You know, things are kind of slipping, I feel, out of my hands. And I really need to capture it now if it's ever going to happen. I think that if I don't get it this year, if something don't turn up this year, it may not happen. I want to give you some thoughts this morning how you are going to become all God has created you to be and how you are going to rescue that thing that has slipped away from you. Three quick thoughts here. First of all, the angel said, get up. Now, what does that mean for you? This needs to be a year where you rise from those things that have held you back. This needs to be a year where you focus on not, not slumbering, not, not, not feeling sorry for yourself. The angel is very clear to Joseph. He said, get up. My thought, my word for us this morning is, listen, you need to leave those things behind that have plagued you. You need to somehow say, say no to those things that have weighed you down. You need to somehow encourage yourself to get up. 
You know how it is when we're tired, it's, it's a Monday morning or, or, or whatever it may be, and we don't want to go to work or whenever you go to work or your responsibilities. It's easy to want to wanna just lay there. That was one of those for me this morning. Uh, the alarm went off. Sue says, you got to get going. I said, five more minutes. She said, okay, five more minutes. Then five more minutes came by. I said, five more minutes. Then I figured, I got to get going. But here's my thought. Listen, this cannot be a time where we, we keep hitting the snooze button and saying, I can do it later. No, your time is now. God has something precious for you this year. You need to get up. You need to forget those things that are behind. You need to, yes, lay aside those things that have weighed you down and you need to seize the opportunity. There's going to be some things that come before you this year. Some opportunities. You need to get up. You need to try again. You need to do those things that you've done once before. But this time, it's going to work for you. This time, it's going to happen. Why? Because this is your hour. God, God planned for you. God wants to do something special in your life. The word for you is get up. Now, and we're moving on to the second one, but getting up uh, uh, signifies arising. This is your year to rise from the ashes of debt. Rise from the ashes of, of, of things that have held you back, the addiction. Rise from those things that are holding on to you. Listen, if you can somehow be like Joseph here, he wanted, it was hard for him to, to escape everything. He wanted, I'm sure, to, to stay there. But the angel knew that there was more in his destiny. So the word for you this year, the first is you need to get up. The second quick thought, take the child and his mother. Now, what, where are you going to get a point out of that? This is the year of priorities. This is the year where what is important for you? What's our position? Our position, we need to arise. We need to get up. Whether we're tired, whether we've got to seize the moment. It's going to be opportunities that God is going to bring your way and the devil is going to try to quash it and try to get you to, to say no and to, to bypass it. But also, the word to, for Joseph, which is our word for us this morning, is take the child and his mother. He didn't say, take all that gold that you got from those three kings, though that's okay to take the gold, I'm sure. But I, they, were, they came poor and they left, I'm sure, a little bit wealthy when I saw the story and, and, and read it again this year. But listen, there was priorities. He said, get up, take the child and his mother. Listen, I don't know where you're at, but the enemy wants to get you bogged down to lots of different things that don't matter. The enemy wants to somehow get you into this thing, that thing. This is the year of right priorities for you. You can't waste any more time trying this, trying that. It didn't get you anywhere. It didn't get you as far as you should be. But this is the year where it's about, he, he, he was very clear, take the baby. You see, this whole thing was about getting their family to where they needed to be. God wants to bring you to the point that he has for you. And it would be so easy for you to get bottled up into that thing. Listen, don't apply for that job if it's not God's will. Don't, don't go down that direction if it's not God's will. Do what God has called you to do. Know what you, your life needs to be about. You know what Sue and I did after we were, were first married many years ago? Uh, uh, we, we used to, at the, at the beginning of the year, we would make a list of different things that we wanted to see God do. And we would try to remember them. Many times we would forget them, but we would check them off. But they were priorities that we tried to govern the year by. Here's the thing you need to do. What is important for you? Joel is a very busy man. I see discipline in his life. And I thought of it the other day. It would be so easy for him to get off here, to get off there. But he, his sacral, uh, central focus needs to be what God has called him to do. And he can't allow all these distractions. Listen, the enemy is going to try to distract you this year. The enemy is going to try to say that church, you don't need it. 
go to Wisconsin Dales. Well, Wisconsin Dales, there's nothing wrong with that. But try to go on a Friday, come back uh, Sunday morning at least. But listen, that, listen, the greatest thing for you is to not be distracted because it's so important you become that you get God inside of you and you break through those things that are trying to hold you down. It was here. Take the child and his mother. The angel was very specific. He was trying to pinpoint and get it into Joseph's mind what this thing was all about. God wants to reprogram you, rethink your thoughts, that you somehow get clarity. What did God speak to you a while back that you are leaving on the table? What has God said to you that you think it's only a dream that has gone by? Maybe this is the year that you need to pick yourself up, brush yourself off. Maybe it's the year to get on the treadmill again. Lord, have mercy on us. Maybe it's a year for you to, to try to do that thing that you always want to do that has failed. I don't know what's in your life and what the vision for you in life. Only you know that. But all I'm saying is, as we come together, can you allow God, can the priorities be honed? You know, it's so easy to do this or that. Paul said a verse this once. He says, this one thing I do. Listen, you need to have a clarity about your life. You need to have a pinpointing. Why? So you go there. Every business, every corporation knows this. They need to have a, a statement, a mission statement about their life. Can you get a statement about your life? Can you somehow uh, say three things and stick to it and somehow work at that? It's very clear. Take the child and his mother. It was about priorities. The first thing you need to do is put God first in your life. Business is great. They could have brought the treasures. Yeah, I'm sure they brought the treasures, but they didn't mention it here. They mentioned it earlier that they came and they gave the, you know, they gave the treasures. You know what I found? Put God first and the treasures come. You know what I found in my life? That if you honor God, seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. I found when you honor God, God honors you. God is not short of money. God is not short of ideas, inventions. God is not short of, of the things that you want out of life. But you know what he's looking? He's looking for you to turn your heart towards him. He's looking for you and your priorities. I see here that this was instruction. This instruction came from heaven. It was the divine you, we talked about a few weeks ago. This was instruction by the angels, but I'm sure it came from the Father on how Joseph needed to conduct his life, on how that they needed to go forward. And they knew that, listen, this was important. They, the Father waited, waited a long time to introduce his son. He didn't want it messed up. You only have one life to live. You only have, and, and the days are, are clicking away. Things are changing. God wants you to fulfill the calling on your life, the dreams. Listen, this is not a time to be playing around with things that aren't going to work. This is not a time to be, be, be just trying and throwing it to the air. We got to be deliberate. We got to have our priorities set. Friends, don't get into relationships that are stupid, aren't going to get you anywhere. Don't get into things that don't last. Listen, it all burns up. Listen, the things of God will last forever. They told me, oh, you're not going to find a, a, a person there. And I was at the small church. God brought Sue there. And, and, and they know you, you got to do this. You got to do this. God knows how to get things into your hands. You don't got to go about the ways of the world. You, no, no, no. You got to put God first. And he will add all things unto God is not short. His arms are not. He knows what he's doing in your life. I like it. First, we, our position. We need to have a position, a daily position of getting up, an attitude of getting up, of, of, of we're going to try being strong in the Lord. An attitude that we, we feel weak, but we have God. We have the wind in our back because we're serving God. We got to have priorities. We got we to gotta, we gotta have the right priorities. The child and mother, we got to set the boundaries in our life. 
We got to put some stakes around. We got to know what we want, what, who we want, what kind we want. We got to define it. And we got we to pin it and we got to stick to it. I heard a message once. It's easy to draw up plans, but it's a little harder to keep executing them. I got three minutes. Take the child and his mother and go. Listen, to the land of Israel. The qu third quick thought is, go to land. It speaks to direction. It speaks to targeted. Go to the land of Israel. You know what you need to have in this year? You need to know where you're going. And you need to keep it in front of you. The enemy is going, if you're, if you're called of God, the enemy is always going to try to distract you, to get you to go somewhere than you're intended to be. And in, here, the angel told him, very clear, get up, take the child and his mother, he gave, and then he says, go to the land of Israel. Specific direction. The second verse is what he did. I hope that verse 21 is for you this year and you can say that you fulfilled these three quick things and you lived, lived a targeted life. I know for this church, this is how I'm going to govern my life. I'm not going to get involved in things. I'm going to get involved in prayer. I'm going to get involved in hospital visitation. I'm going to get involved in helping people. I'm going to get involved with what I know God has called me to do and I'm going to leave those distractions aside. Because they're not going to get me anywhere. They're not going to. The enemy is going to try to get me involved in this business deal, doing that. Forget it. Nothing wrong with you doing that. But I'm not going to be a part of it. Because I only have so many years left. And I want to bring in. I want you and your family to be blessed. And I don't want the enemy to be distracting or holding anything back. Listen. Go to the land of Israel. You need to know where you're going. You need to know that your promised land, you need to identify what is your promised land? What is the vision? Where are you headed? And you need to be target that. It might be okay. I want by the end of the year, I want to do to, to, to this or that. I want this. You know, one time, I, I, now this has changed it a little bit. I remember one time we were building our first church. I went to the city council and asked permission in, in a suburb around here, and they laughed at me. McDonald's brought in a stack of plans. I brought in one sheet, because I only had $500. And I brought in, that's what it cost me, one sheet, uh, $500. And they said, when you, you know, when you have a few more pages to define what you want to do, bring it back. I left there, and I said, Lord, we had a little donut shop, because I came up, we, had, we were a baker family. And I had a little donut shop, I said, Lord, I, I believe in within 10 years, you're going to, don't get this wrong, make us worth $200,000. I don't know why I just said it. And I just started, Joel has a, a good prayer out. If you're going to pray, pray bold prayers. And now that was bold at the time for me. You know what? We surpassed that a while ago. Now what I'm getting at was, it wasn't because I well, was this. It's I knew that in order to do some things, that it took some things. That I knew that if I was going to come back, that I couldn't be laughed out and, and, and tell, go away. That if I was going to bring it to pass, there needed to be some things happen. Here's what I'm saying to you. Know where you're going. Know where you're going. Pray the prayer. Line it all up and keep it going. Let me tell you something. You put God first place on a regular basis. Joel says it this way. Give us a year of your life and you'll never be the same. Listen, you give God. You dedicate this year that I'm going to stay focused. I'm going to get up. I'm going to, I'm going to be diligent. I'm going to, it's going to be hard, but I'm going to take this out. I'm going to keep my priorities. I'm not going to this, this. I'm going to, it's about the child. It's about the mother. I'm going to stay focused, narrow-minded. And then I'm going to keep the, the promise, what God has for me, direction. Joseph knew that he was leaving Egypt and going to a place. Know on a regular basis where you're headed. It might be Friday. You might have got an argument with your, your, your boss, but you know where you're heading. And these little skirmishes along the way, they don't bother you because you've got the big picture. You know where God is taking you. You live a life of that. Let me tell you something. By the end of this year, you're going to see some things happen you never dreamed were possible. That business will excel. 
You will get that relationship. No, I'm going to just try it this way. No, I believe God wants to do it this way and find me the right person. No, I'm going to step out. I'm going to try it this way. You could try it that way, but you're going to keep spinning your wheels. You're not, there's no time to spin wheels anymore. You, you're going somewhere. God has big plans for you. Forget the sidetracks, the sideshows. They're not going to materialize. And if they materialize, they're not going to last long. Here's what I want to say. We're talking about vision 2020 for your life. My wife put it this way, 2020 vision. I said, Sue, that's hokey. Uh, 2020 vision. But here's what I'm saying. The vision for this year, allow it, God, to bring about his purpose. Allow God to do it. Bow your heads, please. Is there someone here this morning in our cl closing prayer that would say, hey, pastor, I need God. I want to start a new and a fresh. Is there someone here that would say, I need God in my life? No one looking around. It's on between you and God. Raise your hand, please. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Listen, I invite you to pray that prayer with me. I'm going to pray it. Matter of fact, I would ask that you out there, that anyone here would be invited to pray and let's cement our relationship with God and let's affirm our trust in Him. Dear Jesus, I love you. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for my mistakes. Come into my life. Cleanse me. Forgive me. I love you, Lord. I dedicate my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Father, bless your people. Please bless your people. Fight their battles this week. When the enemy tries to Come in and say, no, nope, it ain't worth it. Don't get up. No, don't try again. Don't go there. Don't go to, don't go to, don't see, don't read your Bible. Don't go to church. No, say, God, I know that your way is the right way. So God, help your people, we pray. Bless them, bless them, bless them, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand, can we?